Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the final week of the 2018 Winter Webinar Training Series. Uh, today's topic is product selection. So today's agenda will cover the product label, the safety data sheet, additional points regarding labels, and then finally factors of really affecting your product selection um, outside of cost and stuff, uh, understanding labels and, and how they read, I think, is utmost in being able to properly select your product. So starting off with the label, why the label is important. It's the law. So when you're out doing your injections or applications, uh, following the label is the governing body in what you're doing. Uh, if you don't follow the label, uh, we call that going off-label, and that can, one, result in some, some poor plant health. Also, if you're caught doing it, uh, it can come down uh, for with some serious legal and professional consequences. Uh, there are federal, state, county, and even local provisions. So make sure to always check with your uh, extension agency to see if there's anything kind of specific to your area regarding certain products. Um, for instance, imidacloprid, uh, the active ingredient in Imijet, is um, one of the latest products to start, one of the latest actives to start being banned uh, for spray and uh, granular application use in, in states. Uh, Connecticut doesn't allow it. Um, I believe Long Island doesn't allow it anymore either. Uh, so, you know, make sure that you check because uh, what's on the label itself, uh, on the product label, is going to be federal, uh, with a couple state notes. Like if California is not allow, if California doesn't allow a product, uh, it'll be just noted on the on the federal label. Um, but county and local laws aren't aren't on there. So make sure that you know your local and county laws. Ignorance is no defense. So. You know, without even without checking, if you go out and make an application that's off label to any kind of county or local law, that that doesn't count. It doesn't uh, it doesn't work as a defense. You're still going to get slapped with a fine if not have your license taken. Um, license uh, labels are are updated, so never assume that uh, a label that you have from last year is the current label. Uh, for Arborjet products, you can always head to the website. Uh, but there's also other websites like CDMS uh, that that carry all the up-to-date labels as well. Uh, on your labels, you're also going to find rates and proper timing for when to apply your products. So there are three types of labels out there. There are there's the master label, which is what a manufacturer like us. Uh, submits to the EPA for approval. There's the label insert, which uh, is typically what you find on websites. It's an eight and a half by eleven version copy of the container label. Uh, there's also on our website the two double E uh, label inserts of two double E labels. So uh, triage has a two double E. Propozole has a few two double E labels. Um, so those are. Uh, things that we've gone back and applied for 2 E status, meaning that uh, it's basically an amendment to the label without rewriting the entire label. So those are all on websites. Um, and then finally, there's the container label, which is the one that actually comes on the bottle or jug of product. That's the ultimate authority. That's the, the label that must be followed by the applicant. So again, if your product is a couple years old, you can always go and check the label inserts that are on the website just to make sure that they match up. Uh, also, sometimes the label inserts just easier to read because it's on a sheet of paper and not a folded up little booklet. Uh, but all the information on the two is, uh, is the same. It's just structured in a slightly different format. Uh, one's an eight and a half by 11, the other one's a little booklet. So basic elements to the labels, uh, you're gonna find the product name, uh, usually there's a descriptive statement uh, in, triage's in uh, triage's instance. It's injected insecticide for two-year control of listed arthropod pests in deciduous, coniferous, and palm trees. Um, 
you'll find the list of active ingredients and then the total of all other ingredients, meaning the inactives. Uh, the signal word is always going to be on that, that front. Uh, you, sometimes they'll include the product type, whether it's an EC, which uh, stands for emulsifiable concentrate, WP for wettable powders, SC for soluble concentrates, WSP for water-soluble powders. Uh, there's quite a, quite a list of uh, two- to three-letter um, codes that will let you know what type of formulation the product is. Uh, weight and volume, so, you know, either how much product is in the bottle uh, or how heavy the product is. So, you know, triage comes in a one-liter container where uh, azosol comes in a quarter ounce, three-quarter ounce, six ounce, or two-pound container. So it'll also let you know if, uh, if it's a liquid or a solid. Uh, the manufacturer is listed on there as well as EPA registration and establishment numbers. Uh, EPA registration number is the one that the EPA gives to a product that's been approved to be used, and establishment numbers refer back to the manufacturer. So ArborJet's establishment number is 74578. So any of our ArborJet products will have that uh, where it's our registration, meaning we own the product. Uh, you'll find that at the end of the registration number. The first sets of numbers on there usually define uh, the, the type of product, you know, insecticide, fungicide, um, rodenticide, uh, as well as when it was registered. So, you know, how far down the, the list of registered products is it? Um, and then also if it's a restricted use designation, so triage is still a restricted use pesticide, uh, the the bottle will read that at some point. We'll read that somewhere just to let the public know, let the guy at the counter know that they need to check for a restricted use license before selling it to you, uh, just so it's different from a general use pesticide. Signal words. So again, signal words are typically written on the very front label, so right on the front of the bottle. Uh, the EPA gives out three different choices. It's caution, warning, or danger. Those are determined by worst case of acute, so short-term exposure level, uh, whether that's oral ingestion, inhalation, thermal exposure, eye irritation, skin irritation. So uh, when they do all their testing, they will pick uh, if it, depending on how severe one of those cases is, that's what they base caution, warning, and danger on. Uh, that's not to be confused with terms like toxic or poisonous. Uh, that is solely to the LD50 number. So LD50 numbers do not affect signal word. Remember how um, triage has, is a restricted use pesticide, carries a, a warning for a signal word, but its LD50 number is extremely high, meaning it's very low on the toxic, toxic scale. So targets and rates, <coughs> excuse me, um, there's always going to be a section on rates and, and targeting pests. Uh, so labels can be specific or general in regards to pest lists. Um, they can or will list many or just some species and then include the SPP, which is a, equal to putting an ellipse at the end of a sentence. So SPP just is the general shorthand for species. Um, at all. So like up top uh, on this uh, on this label, uh, pine cone worm, which is Diarectria species. So there's many different forms after that. Um, and so there's genera. Uh, this goes back to phylum kingdom, all the way uh, back to basic biology. So uh, there's many different species of Diarectria. Uh, for pine cone worms, this covers all of them. Instead of listing out a hundred different varieties of, or species of this insect, we, it works on them all, so we just put that and then the fact that the SPP means it, it works for any type of family. 
Uh, the same thing, uh, and then it could get specific. So tent caterpillars, including eastern, forest, Pacific, and western. Um, western spruce budworm, winter moth. So those are specific listings versus the the SPP for, you know, kind of uh, there's a whole bunch that fall into this category. It covers them all. So rates. Rates can be... Uh, expressed in a number of forms, uh, whether it's milliliters per diameter of breast height, ounces per thousand square feet, teaspoons per gallon, uh, milliliters per injection site. Uh, so, you know, milliliters per dBH is typically how you find most ArborJet uh, injectable products. Um, fertilizers are often written at ounces per thousand square feet. Sprayable products are ounces per thousand square feet, uh, when, especially when you're, you know, working at, looking at golf courses or lawn care, um, sports turf, uh, that's typically how they, they measure your product rate out. Teaspoons per gallon for mixing rate, uh, that's typically how you find the azosol method written out, so it's number of teaspoons into a certain number of gallons of water. Um, or with AceJet, it's milliliters of, of product. Um, per injection site when you're using the quick jet or the quick jet air. Um, and just like with Ace Jet, if you're using an, an IV system, the rate is actually slightly different because of how fast the product moves up <coughs> and how much more space you're putting in there, you actually need to include more products to, to push it sideways. So rates and dilutions will change depending on application method as well. So storage and disposal, um, proper way to, to keep your products and then get rid of them either when they're past ability to be used or you've finished with a container, uh, it's, you've used it all up and what to do with the bottle after it's been done. <coughs> it's always going to have its own section. Uh, it tells you the legal way to dispose of product um, so lots of town, and then lots of towns also will do will have a return uh, or disposal date uh, once or twice a year. Um, you know, in case you move into a you know when you buy a new house and you move in there and the the previous owners didn't take everything out, you don't know you know what's in this paint can. <coughs> you know, excuse me. Using a company like Enpro can cost a lot, a lot of money, um, but. You know, around me, the certain towns will have disposal days where you can bring in things that you don't know what to do with them, and they'll take them off of you for, you know, like $25 worth of uh, a pallet. You know, whatever you can fit on a pallet is going to be 25 bucks, uh, which is a lot cheaper than, than going through like NPRO or um, Triumvirate or any of those types of companies. You also should never reuse a container. Uh, one of the bottles that you buy product in, those should never be reused. Uh, you're supposed to triple rinse those. Uh, so pour water in, uh, swish it around, uh, do that three times just to make sure that it's cleaned out. Uh, you can dispose of the rinse aid through your equipment. Um, use on targeted vegetation. So, you know, if you're at the end of your bottle of triage or G4, uh, you know, you can give a little bit of an extra boost to a tree uh, just to make sure that your bottle's nice and rinsed out. If you're working with a sprayable product, uh, you just, you know, you mix it up, rinse it into your backpack sprayer, uh, and go spray it on some, some shrubs that are in the area that, that you think might get hit but need, just need a super low rate. Uh, and then after taking care of all the rinsing, uh, you should actually poke three holes in the bottom of it just to make sure that it can't get reused. Uh, so when you do throw out your cleaned out bottle, uh, you know, someone can't come by, grab it, and they're like, oh, this looks good. And then uh, this looks like something I can, you know, put my alcohol in and, and walk around and no one will notice. Um, so they can't pour it in there in case there is anything left in it. The safety data sheet, basic parts of that is section identification, so it's going to have the name of product, 
in this case, Imaget, the type of product, it's an insecticide, the supplier details, that's us, we're the manufacturer, uh, including our contact information, and we still are located at 99 Blueberry Hill Road in Woburn, Mass. Uh, our phone number is still and always will be 781-935-9070. That's how you get a hold of me. Um, and then also uh, email, in case that's our AJ information. Let's see, you can email that. That gets to a number of people in the office. Uh, as well as emergency contact information. So if there is an accident, uh, you know, whether you drop your quick jet needle first onto your foot and it pierces your shoe and you think you might have been exposed to some image at, or um, a hose breaks on your tree IV and you get squirted, uh, there's the emergency nut telephone number uh, for Chemtel. That's the company that, that services our emergency contact. They are... Uh, experts in what to do um, with uh, exposure to a, a product. You'll also find the OSHA status on uh, hazards identification, OSHA status, uh, whether it's hazardous or not. Um, toxicity levels of the substance, including its acute, its skin, eye, dermal, oral, and so on of uh, uh, of exposure to the product, the, the hazard symbol, uh, in this case it's a warning, which is the exclamation point and a diamond. Signal word, uh, ha hazard statement, which is harmful if, if swallowed, causes skin and eye irritation. Um, response if exposed, so this is an, uh, the safety data sheets, another place to go in case uh, there is an, an incident where, you know, it's you Spill some on your hand without wearing a glove. What are you supposed to do with it? Um, as well as spore, storage and disposal, uh, as well as a number of other things like hazards not otherwise classified. Um, so if there's just something that doesn't fit into acute skin, eye, dermal, or anything listed above, that's where that statement would go. And then also section three is uh, composition information on ingredients. So this is where you'd find the information on imidacloprid itself uh, and what else is in the bottle. Um, ingredient information, substance versus mixture, so ingredient versus uh, solution. The chemical abstract service, so uh, used as the same chemicals are the same. I have no idea what that means. I don't even know how that got written like that. Um, oh, in case there's uh, stuff that has different names but are the ex uh, same thing. So like avermectin versus emamectin. It's still very so similar that um, uh, things like that. Um, Product code, uh, so which is our, which is going to be the Arborjet product number, and then ingredient name, uh, whether it's inerts and actives. Uh, inerts are not required to be name uh, to be named for privacy purposes of us. So um, obviously, we do need to declare that it's a midcloprid uh, because that's the active ingredient. But to protect our formulation, we are not required to. Uh, say what our solvents are and uh, everything, the other, um, the inactive ingredients in the bottle, uh, just so it's, it's tougher for someone to steal our formulation. First aid measures, so what, ha what to do if there's eye contact, inhalation, skin contact, ingestion, uh, and the most important fact will actually ba uh, vary based on product. Uh, so eye contact causes eye irritation, Inhalation, no known significant effects, uh, will cause skin irritation uh, and harmful if swallowed. So then finally, um, other factors off the label versus, uh, to what uh, go into product selection. What's your budget, both for the customer and for you? Uh, so balancing customer's budget versus you still making money off of this. 
So knowing what your co the cost of the application is for each product, whether it's triage, uh, ImageJet, AceJet, or PhosphorJet versus Propozole. And that's not just material. So um, how much time is it going to take? Uh, you know, am I going to need, uh, you know, uh, you know, how long am I going to be at this property? What type of insect am I going after? Am I going after, you know, a, a leaf-feeding caterpillar? Um, am I going after hemlock woolly adelgid or emerald ash borer or shot hole borer? So you do need to know what uh, insect you're really going after, um, what option, which will initially determine your options for, for product. Efficacy. So, how does the pro the product has to work? Otherwise, you're not going to get any repeat business out of this. Your name's going to be soiled out in the community. So, uh, you also have to make sure you're using the product that that's labeled for the insect. Um, learn and understand trial data, research data on efficacy. So, you know, Imaget and Triage both work for emerald ash borer. Imaget's only going to work for a year. Triage is going to work for two years. Uh, so balancing that, you know, the cost of doing an ImageJet application versus triage, it, it might save you 35 to 40 cents per inch diameter, but you're going to have to come back every year to make that application. Um, residual effect. How long is the residual retreatment interval? So again, ImageJet versus triage for EAB. Um, AceJet versus ImageJet for things like mites uh, or, or aphids, uh, not um, scale, things like that. Product behavior entry, where is your insect going to feed? Does it go where the pest is? So, um, you know, emerald ash borer, you're not going to want to use AceJet because AceJet is going to basically go straight up to the leaf tissue and stay in there. EAB is a, a xylem feeding insect, so you want something that's thicker that's going to stay in the trunk. Uh, pest life cycle dictates time dictates timing, as, uh, especially when you're using products like OTC or AceJet or Azosol. Uh, those products don't have a very long residual, so you need to make sure that the product that the insect is actively feeding, or that the um, that the disease is uh, actually there uh, and starting to produce spores or, or bacteria. Uh, because if you put it in too early and it's not there yet, it might wear off before it takes care of all the, all the disease. And then environment versus risk. Uh, you know, you might be able to just do uh, a ring around the property and not have to treat all the, all the trees inside the property. Maybe you can create a barrier um, so um, that's also, you know, um, or if it's, uh, if it's an apple tree for scab, you can use either phosphogen or propozole. Maybe use propozole on a crab apple because no one's going to eat those apples. But uh, phosphogen on uh, an apple tree where you do want to eat the fruit because phosphogen is, is fine for agriculture, but propozole not. So you got to look at kind of the start to finish life of the tree or the plant, and then what product uh, will best suit the end goal, and then work into, you know, then know what you're applying for and what's labeled, what products are labeled for that problem, uh, and then make sure that the products can end up where the the pest or disease is. So with that, uh, that's going to be the end of product selection today. So if anyone's got any questions, feel free to bring them up in the chat line.
All right. Well, uh, if no one has any more questions right now, um, feel free to email me or reach out to your technical manager. Uh, they have great regionally specific answers. Uh, thanks for making it so far. There's just one more class this week on Wednesday and Thursday where uh, I will be briefly covering palm trees or palms because they're not trees. And we'll find that out on Wednesday. Find out why. Thanks, everyone. Bye.